Hey everyone, I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And our guests today are Jackie Rice, VP and CIO at Frederick Health, and Rishi Sarna, MD. He's chief clinical officer at Backline. Welcome. Oh, Thank you yeah. for having us. Thanks for today. having us again, John. Thank you. Yeah, excited to dive into today's discussion. Uh, you know, we always love having CIOs on. Uh, to have real experience with uh, the problems that vex healthcare, I think is is the way to describe it. But uh, yes. Rishi, why don't you uh, start us off? Tell us a little bit about yourself and Backline. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, John. Um, so I'm a chief clinical officer at Backline. Uh, I left clinical medicine back in 2016. Uh, started at Backline in June, and at Backline, pretty much we you know we call ourselves like the Swiss Army of solutions. We do you know secure communication, telehealth. Uh, physician scheduling, appointment reminders. I can go on and on, but that's kind of a gist of it. So. Awesome. Thanks. And Jackie, how about yourself in Frederick Health? Um, I actually come from a nursing background. I was a awesome. NICU nurse. I Came love up nurses. through IT. <laughs> um, I'm the CIO at uh, Frederick Health. We're an independent community hospital, about 269 beds. Um, we have 26 um, ambulatory sites, wow. about 120 providers. Um, a lot going on. Yeah, a good size. So Rish, talk to us, you know, about alignment of clinicians across the care continuum. And, you know, why is that important and how does that contribute to these positive patient outcomes that are so crucial in healthcare? Yeah, and, you know, I, before I start, you know, I think with care continuum, that, that covers uh, a big area. You know, when I think of care continuum, I'm thinking of when from a diagnosis to when you're officially, you know, curing the patient per se, right? So the example I always give, let's say if you're doing something exhilarating, like skiing or snowboarding in Colorado, you tear your ACL or something less, less exhilarating, like playing pickleball, right? <laughs> tear your ACL, you're gonna go to your PCP. Your PCP is gonna be like, you know what, I suspected a torn ACL. That PCP now is going to refer to you to an orthopedic surgeon. He or she is then gonna be like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure this is a torn ACL. Let's get you some imaging in. You have to go to a radiologist, obviously. Now you're going to be scheduled for surgery. You have everyone to deal with in the patient. Once you are done with surgery, now you're post-op. And then the next, you're going to have to do the rehab. So everyone I just named, think about all those individuals that are involved. And in Care Continuum, with the advancements in healthcare IT today, you have to make sure all these people are on the same page. And I think that once you filled in those gaps, it just makes the patient outcome a lot more seamless with the patient's not running around being like, well, what did this doc say? Or what did this physical therapist said? If the physical therapist is like, you know, we need to prolong your therapy for another three to six weeks. Now you can be in touch with the orthopedic surgeon, eventually goes back to the family care doctor. So you can see how it's very linear, but it's also, you know, yeah, at any point that chain can be broken. So I think that's where a communication platform is very beneficial. Interesting. What would you add, Jackie, in that regard? You know, every CIO I talk to talks about this, you know, the challenge of, of streamlining consults and referrals in patient care. You know, talk to us about your work in that and you know, to, to make that a better process at Frederick Health. Um, it, streamlining those consults and referrals are really important for our providers so they don't get frustrated yeah. and our patients. We want our patients to get those referrals and get the care that they need. We're a community hospital, we're caring for our patients. So, you know, I have a lot of good examples. Backline gives us that HIPAA compliant way to communicate. Whereas, you know, years ago, years ago, <laughs> well, I mean, you might you might have found somebody taking a picture or sending something on a cell phone, um, you know, a message that we do not want that secure patient data communicated that way. So uh, Backline has given us that HIPAA um, compliant piece of that. And uh, the consults, one of the things we've been able to do is the, um, uh, we've been able to build teams for, for specialists. And that has been life changing for these consultants because I'll give an example of our cardiac yeah, team. So we have some APPs and then we have the cardiac act surgeon and, and that whole team. And there are lots of different kinds of consults. So if we built that specialty, it could go to all of them. They could find the appropriate person to take care of that. You know, it's you're not waiting for somebody to come out of a procedure, the cardiologist to come out of a procedure, because right. I just sent it to one cardiologist to see. So it goes to the team and they make the best decision of 
who should do that referral, who should take care of the patient, and the patient gets faster care. I was going to say, I, I can see why that benefits the patients, but it, it sounds like it probably benefits the doctors too, because then they oh. don't see a patient that should have been seen earlier. Is that They get frustrated with if they, the cardiologist would come out and they have six <laughs> things that they have to address, <laughs> they and were all four of them, them. <laughs> could have been taken care of by the APP, right? Uh, and, and they can concentrate on the two that are left for them that they really need to go see. So it really streamlines things for for the providers as well. Our hospitalists, um, you know, they're busy all the time. So the ED docs always use backline to text to text to the hospitalist okay. the report for them. So they don't have to call. The ED doc doesn't have to wait for the phone. <laughs> to be answered. I was say, do people answer phones these days? And, <laughs> no. No, they don't. Straight to voice. Though. And I the don't. hospitalist isn't interrupted in their interactions with patients to look at, you know, I'm getting a call. Do I have to take it or not? Interesting. You know, it really um, it really provides a better workflow. It's it's worked really well for us. Awesome. Rish, what else would you add with, you know, I mean, Backline has a lot of customers doing this. You know, what do you see and on how it's helping them you know, complete it quicker, you know, and improving the care? Well, I mean, if we're, if we're sticking to the top of consults, I, the easiest way to say it is just, it's just there for you, right? You know, like it was Jackie was elaborating, and you know, back in the day when I was in my training, if you wanted to consult someone, you'd pick up the phone, you'd try to like see who's, you know, who's on the schedule. Maybe you call down to the unit and like, who's on call today? You know, with, you know, without, with our platform, I can literally just go into, you know, secure chat. I can create my own team. And I can literally, after I put the console order in, I can be like, you know what? I have to do a GI console. I can literally just type in at GI console. And in real time, it'll notify who the GI doc on call is. So now I'm not wasting all this time. So think about how much, how many minutes you save. You know, we always say, you know, in anything in healthcare IT, if you can even save your, you know, your clinical staff 15 minutes, they're going to be able to eat lunch. You know, and like, and so you, True. and that is, to describe go to that. The bathroom. I mean, that's like, I mean, that is huge. I mean, think about, I mean, you're, you know, I would say a hospitalist on a given day is probably in a busy hospital, probably doing eight to 10 consults a day. Yes. And now it's like, I mean, when I had to do consults, it was one of those things where obviously I knew it was beneficial for the patient, but I would roll my eyes because I'm like, this is going to be, I'm going down this like tunnel, which I don't know when the end is. And like, if Jackie was saying, it's like, is this person going to pick up their phone? Are they going to answer their page? Are they going to call me back? And now I can put everything right there. And me being the, you know, the, the, the doc that's being consult, I can be like consulted. I can be like, oh, okay, well, I can answer this real quickly. Right. So it just streams like the process so much more quicker. And like we were saying, we go to the bathroom and we can finally eat now. So, <laughs> so, I was going to yeah. say, said like a true nurse that you got to so. go to the bathroom, which <laughs> sadly should not be a rarity. Yeah. But no, I mean, I think it's interesting to talk about, you know, coordinating care across the continuum, right? Uh, you talked about a great example. Yes. Are there some other challenges they face in doing the coordination um, of the care? Well, for, for example, one of the things that we, um, that we struggle with in, in the ED across the nation is throughput, right? Mm. One of the things you need are your transporters. We took backline, gave it to our transporters, they are using that. I took away their pagers and their phones that they have several Save things they carry. <laughs> Saving money. But they they get those those calls and they can get it as a team and mm. coordinate the care. It's the teamwork. Taking care of patients is teamwork in a hospital. Mm. Everyone from your nurses to the doctors to, to the transporters. So that has really made a difference and nursing. Our nurses use backline to communicate with the providers, the ED providers, especially in the hospitalists mm -hmm. that are on because they can't get them on the phone either. Look, these hospitalists are working hard. They're seeing 18 patients sometimes a day. Yeah. They have to get patients discharged. So if I can send them messages with backline of this patient is ready to go and this is, this is what's happening, they maybe can better manage their time. It's all about managing your time, and in healthcare, it's all about priorities, right? Yeah. I think Backline is a tool that can help people manage those priorities and manage their time better with that communication. Communication is key, but relying on people picking up phones is not an answer. 
No. It's funny because no. we would never do that in our personal life, right? Like, no. I think we've all accepted we're texting, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, very true. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but for yes. somehow, like, why, why, yes. why would we think it would be different there? Yeah. And I think what you said is so interesting because it's all about the improved communication, mm-hmm. right? We know yes. that that is what needs to be done. And maybe, you know, Reese, you could chime in here about you know, how improved communication, and, and it sounds like some interdisciplinary collaboration, oh, including the transport, et cetera, yeah. you know, or, or even other clinicians, yes. how does it enhance, in, you know, care and overall efficiency? What have you seen with, you know, your other clients? Yes. You know, if we're sticking to like interdisciplinary communication, right? Uh, the example, I have to give a personal example, if you don't mind. Sure. So, you know, my, my dad was having some venous insufficiency in his legs. I was in some pain in his legs. I was like, okay, well, go to your primary care doc, goes to his primary care doc. Primary care doc sends him to a cardiologist. Cardiologist then refers him to a venous specialist, but my dad's primary doc, care doc also referred him to a podiatrist. The podiatrist also referred my dad to a venous specialist. So my dad gets back at me and he's like, hey, listen, I have these follow-up appointments. And I'm like, hold on, you're going to two different venous specialists, why? He said, like, well, the cardiologist told me to go one and the podiatrist told me to go one. And <laughs> You know, my wow. dad, my parents had the luxury of their son being a physician, right? You yeah. know, I mean, it, not every family has a, you know, the luxury of having a healthcare member of their family. So I told my dad, you got to scrap this. You're literally wasting your time. If he hadn't called me, he would have gone to both. Maybe would have gotten conflicting information, probably would have gotten the same information. Sure. But, you know, we always talk about how it saves time on our end, you know, as the provider end, you know, a doctor or nurse. But... I think just as important is what's the time it's saving on the patient end, right? If you have, a, if you have, if those four docs had actually communicated amongst each other, and here's the best part, all four of those docs are in the same building. If they just would have <laughs> communicated with each other, they would, they could have saved my dad going through all these multiple appointments, not having to call me up and be like, oh, hold your brakes on that. So, th- you know, th- that patient standpoint, it saves a lot of time too if the docs are actually have a platform where they can communicate with one another. Yeah. You know, that cardiologist could have been like, yeah, I'm already, I'm already referring him to a venous specialist. The podiatrist is like, oh yeah, you already have a venous specialist appointment. No need to do that. So Yeah. Well, and your, your dad was reserving two spaces that could right. have been used for someone else. And in exactly. many places, three, six months out, right? Exactly. So, he doesn't want to pay for both of those. <laughs> no, no, not That's at all. a good no, point, no, too. No, no, no. <laughs> and yeah. the and insurance won't reimburse it no. for it either, no. probably. Let's talk about from the clinician perspective. I love that you're a nurse, you know, what's been their reaction to the, you know, to the adoption of these platforms like Backline and how has it kind of influenced their daily workflow? You gave us some examples, of course, but are there some features and functionality that like they really love and have made the biggest impact? Sure. We can use it on the computer or you can use it on a phone. You know, way back when we first started, um, giving nurses phones, we didn't, we, we told them they can't have it on the floor, can't let people see it. Now, <laughs> now it's, now it's, on it. yeah. well, it's, it's yeah. their, their work device. And really, you know, our, our workforce is turning over very quickly. 50% of our workforce are very young. They text. Yep. That's how they communicate. Yep. Yep. And so uh, the ability for the nurses to get the care that they can do, they can text the transporter to come get a patient to, wow. to take home, their care management. Um, you know, finding the right provider can be challenging. So you can look up and see who's on call, use that provider. You know, in healthcare right now, it's all about length of stay too. Yeah. And that helps our bottom line. We're all struggling with finance. So what can we do to streamline this? And, you know, patients don't want to stay any longer than they have to either. We can use it for tests and, and those kinds of things too. So I think, I think at first it was challenging for the providers. They're used to getting the phone call and having someone yell at them, hey, the, the call's for you if you're in the ED. They adapted very quickly and took it on very quickly they much prefer doing that they're in the ed they have a routine they're taking care of patients they take care of it between patients the surgeons you know even you talk about the gi provider maybe doing a procedure he does not want a phone call that (laughs) that you know he and he doesn't know how bad it is so now he has a team that helps him decide what you know who should we who needs to do this and if he really needed to be interrupted, then he has somebody who's made that clinical decision because 
there's a team group taking this and, and managing it. So that's interesting. Do your clinicians ever get overwhelmed with too many messages? I mean, we hear that a bit yes. on the patient portal side. But, you know, you know, it, but I, I mean, I feel like a text is still less overwhelming than a bunch of calls. But how, how are you but, managing that? You know, they um, they prefer that rather than a bunch of phone calls. I will tell you that having too many and their workload and their messaging. That's a whole other podcast we could do. Okay? <laughs> we could. Uh, that's the next episode. <laughs> with, yeah. with solutions to come. But with backline, I haven't heard as much of that. The, the messaging with the portal is a lot with the, the patients mm -hmm. and getting back to patients and making sure um, it is important for them to get back to their colleagues. Look, we're a community mm -hmm. hospital. Everybody kind of knows each other and sure. they are they are taking Their care of <laughs> they, they, You know, they're all working together as a team. Like sure. I said, healthcare is teamwork. Absolutely. So they're all doing that. So um, the biggest complaint I hear is when what they need to do is if they're on duty, they, they get, they log themselves on, but you can take yourself off if you're off. Oh, that's a nice our, feature. Our hospitalists work seven days on and seven days off. I think you can get burnt out if you leave that team on and you don't take yourself <laughs> out when you're off. Yeah. And so yeah. that is something that we try to tell them um, to, to do. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really interesting also because... When you think about it, I get it, the messages coming through the yeah. portal from the patients, that can be overwhelming. Yeah. Whereas, you know, no nurse wants to burn out a doctor, no doctor wants to burn out a nurse, so you don't have the same problem. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that there are days the hospitals are like, oh my goodness, I have all these patients <laughs> yeah. and I'm getting these, sure. but, you know, and and we've looked at what else, what else can we do to streamline their process? I may be getting to another question, but, no, it's good. you know, like, what, what can I do to help streamline it? Like, I, I'd like to work with, with Backline to come up with, can I notify the nurse when the labs are back? Not put the, uh, in there the, the actual values, but can I let them know when the labs are back? Because yeah. how many times am I going to go look? The patient needs to go. I'm going to have to log in and stay, look to see stay what tuned. it is. So <laughs> and I, the answer is it depends on the, it depends on the patient so, and how annoying they are, so, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's how many times they yeah. check. Well, yeah. You know, we're, tr we're trying to get, we're trying to, you know, to get them out. Usually sure. it's because there are two patients down in the ah, ED that, that need a bed. Yeah. We're trying to, to so do that at all. Along. So, Makes sense. you know, those kinds of things we try to think about for how can we ease the workflow um, a little bit more. I love that. Yeah. So Risha, we, we kind of talked about speed of consults and referrals, and we love this group idea. I think that's a fascinating approach. But how about, you know, when it comes to the information exchange and making sure the right information gets to the right people, what have you seen in that regard? Well, you know, you know, traditionally we were talking about, you know, when I at least did in my training, when I had to consult a specialist, we'll, we'll pick on cardiology since we're doing all that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you were trained to be concise. You know, it's like give give the most pertinent information in the least amount of words. You know, you were told, right. you know, whether you're a nurse, you know, resident, med student, right. whatever, if you're an attending calling another specialist. And so you always felt like, honestly, you know, even if you did it a million times, you're like, am I saying too much? Am I not saying too much? With, you know, with Backline, like I said, you can, I can literally go, I, I can go on the platform. I can say, you know, at GI or at cardiology console, right? Because I'm thinking, okay, let's say a patient comes in, I do an EKG on them. They have a, let's say, a shortened PR interval, a prolonged QRS complex, and then you see a little thing called a delta wave. That tells me it's Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. By the way, my medical school professors would love that. I still remember that, by the way. I, I, I bet you they was know. all wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, that I can be like, hey, you know what? I need to have a cardiologist look at it. Now, what I can do is I can actually send that EKG over the platform. And, yeah. and if any of I want, I can even take a picture of that EKG right then and there send it to that cardiologist and now look at all the information I gave them in such you know very concise way but I gave them more information probably they needed without even as probably even having to say a word yeah. now obviously at some point we're going to get on the phone and talk sure. about it right. but the amount of information now you can give right. it, it's you're, you're you're completing that picture for that for that specialist to see yeah uh, so that uh, that's the difference I've seen from you know yeah and that's a great point we, they still use the phone if right. it's an emergent issue. Sure. You're not going to text somebody for an emergent issue. Yeah, yeah. But the, the phone is still there. But these are to think, make things 
more streamlined and taking care of the patients faster and and better yeah. it, with the with that team approach I talk about. Well, and as CIO, you have to be grateful that that's HIPAA compliant way rather than just an SMS. I'm just I'm just telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> that, and they do take pictures. The orthopedics take pictures of broken bones, and I guarantee you that happened way back when. Yeah. yeah. So they needed this. They needed this tool yeah. to to do the work that they do and do it being compliant. Well, I think that's what the great CIOs do is they enable the clinicians to do what they're trying to do, right. just to do it in a HIPAA compliant, com, you know, there you <laughs> regulated <go>. way. Right. <laughs> right. And, and to add to Jackie's point, I mean, you know, her working in the field, she understands that. You know, when you have CIOs that understand the pain points of doctors and nurses, she's right. Like, I will probably get myself in trouble for saying this, but yeah, we took pictures all the time. And if I knew my buddy, yes. my buddy who's a cardiologist, I can just call him up and be like, hey, I need your help. He's like, all right, send me the picture. All right, we got it. Not supposed to do that, but when you're supposed to get a you know, quick decision. But you're taking care of the patient. Exactly. The providers exactly. and nurses will always take care of the patient and they'll do what they need to do. And it's our job to give them the tools to do so, right? Yeah. I'm glad we've evolved. About half decade ago, I, I did a, a focus group of doctors, and the doctor said, they're not going to throw us all in jail. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. yeah, but they might find you all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, okay. yeah. We've, we've come a long ways. But that goes back to, like, like you said, the, they want to provide care, and if yes. we give them an option that is right. compliant, they yes. will do it. Yes, so they will. That, that's the message there. They absolutely will. Well, looking forward, what do you see as next? What are the next opportunities available to kind of help facilitate this, you know, the innovations you're doing? You know, I would really like to um, use a, um, the scheduling for providers mm. is key to know who is the specialist on and who's sure. there. We kind of have a combined thing. I'd love to see that streamlined. I'd love to look at, like I said, those things that could make it easier for our clinicians. That's what my job is. Like, when are those labs back? Could I just have the system send an, a message through backline to that? Or, you know, when's a test done that the doctors would really like to really like to see the MRI? When, what can I do to streamline so that they don't have to keep looking for stuff? That's great. Rish, anything you'd add? Um, I, I honestly think it comes down to communication again. You know, I mean, you, you walk around here, every other booth is AI, AI, and I, I think AI I think AI is great. Don't get yes. me wrong. I think it's amazing, you know, it, especially now that we're converting from, you know, a fee for service to more of a, you know, kind of like a community model, which benefits the patient and ultimately does save you money. Those AI tools will help you, you know, automate that information. I, it still comes down to communication. And I know it's very easy for me to say for the company I work for, but that was one of the biggest reasons why I chose to come here because communication is the most important thing moving forward. And it's still the thing that's still lacking the most, you know, if you think yes. about it, right? I mean, it's, yes. we've literally, we've handcuffed <laughs> entire hospital systems because, you know, if, if I'm in Colorado and my records are on an Epic system, and I go to Maryland and I get hurt and I go to Jackie's hospital, they're on Meditech, they can't talk. I mean, yeah. we're still faxing stuff over. And so now it's like, if you if there's a platform, like, hey, listen, actually, I can send you all of his records. Doesn't matter if you're on Cerner, Meditech, Epic, doesn't matter if you're in a mom and pop EHR. Like, how is it 2024 and we're just solving this <laughs> now? So that's, yeah. again, communication, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not easy. These yeah. the developing the tools, making sure that um, you know, if you're going to have providers use it and staff use it, it has to work right. and it has to be easy. It can't be complicated. Right. And, you know, I, that's our job is to provide those tools and work with companies yeah. Yeah. Um, like um, Dr. First and Backlined. And, and, you know, we give feedback to them. They help us right. try to figure out things. It's it's a it's a good yeah. a good yeah. partnership. Yeah, I mean, it takes partnerships. Yeah, health. yes. And, you know, and to, to one last point, what Jackie said it, it's got to be it's got to be easy to use, right? I mean, there's so many times when I was in clinical medicine, you would hear the latest and greatest, and you would just roll your eyes. You're like, I don't have time to learn something new. <laughs> Where if you can give someone something, and it's like, hey, I can play with this for a couple of minutes and figure it out. That's the game changer right there. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Rish and Jackie, I appreciate you sharing all these insights and perspectives. I learned a lot about uh, the great work you're doing at Frederick Health. And thanks, everyone, for watching and listening.
If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting applications. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome.